Good afternoon, boys students. <clears throat> My name is Marcia, and I'm the staff accompanist <clears throat> who's been sending you um, piano videos from time to time. Um, I've been working with Tanya for four years. We met at Longmont Theater C Company, and then shortly after I retired from public school in 2014, um, I started working at Front Range. But I wanted to show you my little place that I work. I haven't made a video since last spring when we went into lockdown in the spring. Here's my little studio, most importantly, the piano. So anyway, I hope you all are doing well. I hope and pray that we can meet in person in the spring, but I don't know, I was just reading online, reading my emails that um, the COVID cases have gone up in Adams County. So, I mean, it's October, we still have November, December, and January, and then spring semester is February, so we can only hope. But anyway, today I wanted to talk to you about Stephen Sondheim, and some of you know who he is, but it looks like there's a lot of you that are kind of beginners, so he's just, he's one of those composers that is the most stellar composer of musical theater. I mean, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say in this century. And the reason I want, one of the reasons I wanted to share about him is he's 90 years old. And it just reminds me so much of our, two of our most prolific composers, John Williams, who wrote, here I wanted to show you some pictures too. Here's Stephen Sondheim. It's really old. Oh wait, it's not letting me reverse. Hmm, strange. Okay, so let me do it this way. It's gonna be cheesy. Where is he? There he is. And then, of course, John Williams, who wrote Star Wars, Harry Potter, probably, I think, Indiana Jones. But, yeah, um, John Williams is 88, and I just feel, wow, we're so lucky on the planet to have people like this writing music. And we've got some amazing up-and-coming composers, too, but um, it'd be nice to, you know, for you to know about these people before they pass on over the Rainbow Bridge. <laughs> I remember um, taking I, my boyfriend from a few years ago to Red Rocks. He, believe it or not, had never been to Red Rocks. And I took him to see um, Etta James. And um, he was so excited, you know. And then she passed away uh, shortly after that. All right. Um, reading my notes, guys. So, nowadays, you know, we've got Lynn manuel Miranda, who wrote Hamilton and other shows. Um, and that's really encouraging. And Adam Gettle and other young composers. But the cool thing about, um, the field, the industry, is these people study with I mean, they have idols, and they they learn from, you know, they're like mentors. So it's not like you're in isolation. Um, and that's what happened with um, Stephen Sondheim, is he, his parents got divorced, and he said that after that he didn't really have a family, uh, and he was mentored by Oscar Hammerstein, who wrote The King and I Showboat South Pacific. And Oscar Hammerstein actually died at a younger age than what I am right now. But anyway, um, Stephen Sondheim uh, started out as a lyricist. He, he wrote lyrics, and he's brilliant and clever. What I love about musical theater 
it, even if you aren't a fan of musical theater, I have a lot of friends who are not fans, just understand that it can enrich our lives by playing out on a stage scenes and experiences, drama, situations that we encounter throughout our lives and touch a place in our hearts and give us that feeling that we're not alone. And they remind us that these experiences are shared by humanity. It's so amazing music. I mean, even if you just listen to a popular song, which is three minutes long, you get that feeling you have your favorite artist, but musical theater is like a two hour show. Um, so it's the same uh, beauty and the same feeling, but in a context of a story with characters. All right. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is talk about some different examples and, uh, because I haven't learned the software that I have and the apps and stuff, I'm just going to put the, the examples, the YouTube examples below. So I'll just say, okay, you can listen to this one and you can pause my video and go down and, and listen to the example. I hope, you know, watch this when you have time to do all this. So, um, the first one that I want to share with you is from 1964, and it's There Won't Be Trumpets. Those smug little men. Oh, and I wanted to say in politics, too, um, there's so much that's relevant to what's happening today. This show was written in 1964. That's 60 years ago. But listen to these lyrics. Those smug little men with their smug little schemes, they forgot one thing. The play isn't over by a long shot yet. There are heroes in the world. Um, so I'll tag, I mean, I'll paste that song below. It, there won't be trumpets. And then um, it's performed by Audra McDonald. This is a singer that Tanya always recommends to listen to, ladies. Um, you know, when there's certain songs, she'll say, make sure you listen to this artist because they are exemplary. Kelly O'Hara said that singing song time always makes her feel that makes her better, not make her feel better, but makes her better. And I totally can relate to that because the first time that I ever played Sondheim, I was just a substitute at the theater for one night. Had I known what I was getting into, it's very difficult to sight read. I, technically, to do it right, you can't sight read Stephen Sondheim. But little did I know, and it was the name of the show is A Little Night Music, and one of the songs from that is Send in the Clowns. And um, that, as a young girl, that was one of my favorite songs. I didn't even know what it was about. It's not a happy song. Uh, I'll, I'll copy that below too. So anyway, moving along, um, the very first show that I did, legit did, was Sweeney Todd. And it's so difficult because as an instrumentalist, I think as a vocalist too, um, the metric changes, which means you'll be going along in beats of three, then it'll change to five, seven, which is five, um, not five, seven, um, five, eight, which is five eighth notes in a measure. It just, you just, when you're learning difficult music like Stephen Sondheim, do what I do. I mean, Tanya and I are professionals, but I still rely on my ear. If it's a show I don't know, or if the music is really convoluted and there's six sharps or whatever, it's just difficult. You, you read the music, but you also listen. So you rely on your ear by listening to the music on YouTube and reading it too. Um, I've, I've been watching a lot of interviews with him and he says in one of his interviews, yeah, you should just, you should just write. Sometimes I just write in keys I don't normally write in just to keep myself on my toes. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Because, you know, 
you'll go be going along and here's a song in six sharps or seven sharps or whatever. And he actually made that comment is for him, it's easier for him to, to read in flats than sharps. And I know Tanya told me once, or Jim, I don't remember which director told me that a lot of times he will set a song, whatever the key is for that person that, that auditioned and got the part, he specifically write the song in the key that's best for them. Because in musical theater, you don't, you don't be like, go to the director and say, that key doesn't work for me. You know, could you change it to another key? No, you're expected to be able to sing the song. But, but when he said he just wrote in, you know, keys that he didn't usually write in, it kind of made me mad. And there are times when I wanted to put up a picture of him and throw darts at it when I was learning it. But the end product is so magnificent that you, it's like child labor, or it's like being in labor in childbirth. You, it's so painful, but then the reward at the end is, is worth it all. Um, so I want you to listen to the performance of Not While I'm Around, which is from Sweeney Todd, and it's performed by Katrina Link um, and accompanied by Sondheim himself. Uh, at the piano and then next I've, I'm going to paste Marry Me a Little which is um, performed by Aaron Tveit T-V-E-I-T I don't know how to pronounce that um, something interesting so I watched the birthday celebrations for Stephen Sondheim so a lot of these examples came from his 90th birthday which was in April and one lady said that when she she was at Indiana University. Stephen Sondheim was the only composer that was allowed on the classical voice jury list. So usually in musical theater, it's that's a separate category than classical. But um, I thought that was interesting. Okay, so um, just to review, you guys know the word classical has kind of two definitions. There's classical versus popular, but then in the in music history, classical is an actual period where at, during the time that Mozart wrote. So there's those two definitions. When I used it, I meant classical versus popular, and a lot of musical theater would be considered popular. Okay, um, I wanted to show you this example of, of um, Lin-Manuel Miranda singing Giants in the Sky. I think that's just so cool that uh, of another writer, songwriter, um, is singing one of Sondheim's songs for his birthday celebration. It's just really, really cool. I don't know if you guys are at, know about Hamilton, you should definitely check it out because uh, it's very popular with young people. Um, okay, that, that almost concludes, I just wanted to end with one more song, um, I remember about the sky in the fall, I remember about the sky in the fall, it's so beautiful, it's from the musical Evening Primrose, um, I hope that you will enjoy his musicals, I hope you will, please don't feel, I mean, I really would like you to just listen to at least a little bit to get a feel for it. Each one is three to five minutes long. I know you're busy. <coughs> you can't, you know, listen to the whole thing. Oh, there's one more I wanted to add. Uh, you Adam Driver fans, uh, Adam Driver from Star Wars. He was in a movie recently called The Marriage Story, and he sings a Sondheim song in there, and... You know, it's not, I'm sure he's not the singer that Tanya would choose for you to hear, but I just thought since, you know, I think some of you guys are Adam Driver fans that you might like like his performance. I'm, he's on pitch and everything, but you, you can tell when you see these musical makeovers like Les Mis and, um, and different musicals, Sweeney Todd even, that has Alan Rickman and Johnny Depp 
you can tell um, the difference. So you mean, are you an actor first or are you a singer first? And so on the movie versions, they're actors first. So their voices, um, you know, some of them they get by. Um, but anyway, so I'll put that one on last. And I hope you enjoy learning about Stephen Sondheim. <coughs> There's so many shows. <coughs> Everything's shut down. It's not like you can even go to a musical right now. But there's so much available online, and <clears throat> there's so many young people on this page, on Tanya's page, who are active uh, singers for local community theaters and even some professional uh, theaters. And Tanya will tell you she has former students on Broadway. So I would love, 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 love there's probably none of you that are still watching at the end of this video. But I would love, love, love if some of you experienced musical theater people would, you know, if you would post your experiences or even post some of your performances and um, or even shared some of your favorite experiences from musical theater. Um, and, you know... Sometimes, many times, since Tanya is the musical director at Longmont Theater, her her students, she invites her students to audition for some of the shows at Longmont. So, but anyway, let's take this opportunity, since we can't go to live shows, let's take this opportunity to expand what we know. I didn't start musical theater until 2013. Uh, I've been a public school music teacher. I was in classical music in college. I played in orchestras. I play the harp. And I did the show, The Boys from Syracuse, when I was your age, when I was in college. And that was it. Um, Longmont Theater, well, actually, I played for a theater in Louisville in 2013. But it was a whole new genre for me. I had to learn, which is all the more reason why if I'm playing for auditions it's really hard for me because it's not in my repertoire um, but when I'm doing a new show I just listen to it first so I can get it in my ear so anyway I'm just rambling but I hope to meet you all the ones that I haven't met I hope to meet you soon um, I hope you're singing every day I actually kind of did the analysis of my YouTube videos for the warm-ups and according to YouTube not very many people have viewed those which means are you warming up um, I mean unless you play the piano yourself in all those different keys I'd encourage you to make sure you're taking care of your voice like Tanya mentioned in a previous video and do your warm-ups Practice, uh, you know, try to sing every day. If you can't get in front of your music, at least sing while you're driving in the car. Please let us know if you're struggling with anything technology. The college, as you probably know, the college can help you with certain issues. Um, I remember there. I just read an email about <clears throat> you can use the computers in the library as a student. <coughs> but... <coughs> but please let us know if you're struggling if there's anything we can help you with because um, we, singing is something we can keep doing um, it's a little different not meeting a person but you yourself is in your body so you can sing you can get up every day and sing we did have one student once that was in a kind of a living situation that was challenging to practice in his house. Look at me. It is, it's 340 and this is the first chance I've had with so many people being in this house and being on Zoom meetings. This is the first chance I had all day <clears throat> to sit down and make this video. So uh, we understand the challenges, but um, you should be singing. I don't, I haven't seen anything posted Tanya mentioned about um, don't wait till the last minute. So please just, 
you know, she's amazing. Please, please do what she's asked because um, she's amazing and you're very lucky to have her for a teacher. So I hope, look forward to meeting all of you soon and I'm going to end this video and have a great week.